Well, check this out. I want you to think about this. If you can find something that you like to do, now pay attention to this. If you can find something you like to do, and you do it every day of your life, you'll never work a day in your life. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Do you guys know what architecture is? Yeah. yeah. What is architecture? Somebody tell me. Oh, yeah. I know. I know what it is. Okay. Architecture is when you design buildings, churches, houses, community centers. When I realized that I wanted to get into architecture, check this out, fellas. When I realized that I wanted to get into architecture, do you think my, my homies, you think they were like, yeah, that's great, we support you 110%, John. No. Or do you think they were like, whatever, man. <laughs> number one or number two? Number two. Number two. And the reason they did that was because in order for me to get into architecture, I needed this thing called a portfolio. The only problem was I didn't know how to draw, so I had to teach myself how to draw. And every time I would pull out my sketch pad at, at, in high school, you would hear that Mission Impossible music. You know what I'm saying? So it would be like this. It like... And I bet you've never seen somebody sketch and do this at the same time, right? <laughs> right? Until one day, I was sketching this like highly detailed flower, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, that was a flower, you know what I'm saying? I was sketching it, and this girl is over my shoulder, and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, nothing, girl, nothing. I slammed it shut. She's like, I think I thought I saw a flower. It looked like a flower, right? And, my, right? and I'm like, nah, girl, it wasn't a flower, man. It was a, it was a tank with a rocket with fires and flames and, and a raccoon, you know what I'm saying? And, and this girl, she's like, but, she's like, but that's too bad because I really like flowers, right? And, and her name was Siobhan, and Siobhan was fine, you know what I'm saying? So this, this thing went off in my head, like, <laughs> so I said, okay, check it out. I opened it up, I'm like, here's a hibiscus, check it out, here's a facidius, here's a dandelion, girl, you know what I'm saying? Slowly, people, I started to open myself up and show my people what I was doing, and to my surprise, instead of them laughing at me, dudes were like, yo, that's pretty fresh, that's pretty fresh. When I got into beatboxing, it was to impress a girl at recess, you know what I'm saying? It didn't mean that I had to beatbox for the rest of my life, but it, I cannot explain to you how many doors beatboxing has opened up for me. That means that I enjoy being on stage. How many people like being on stage, performing, acting, anything? The more you are on stage, the more you develop this thing called self-confidence. And that's something you can use every day of your life. And, and my, my love for acting came from being on stage and that self-confidence. Acting, being able to take on these different characters and play different characters, started from my beatboxing and imitating sounds. You guys probably don't remember a movie called Police Academy, right? Oh yeah. When, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I'm oh, yeah. One through six. You remember Jonesy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All these sounds. And I just started imitating it. And then from that, I started imitating my teachers a little bit, how they move and a transition doing it. Bottom line is this, self-confidence is a beautiful thing. You keep building it, you keep building it. And, don't, and, and like Mark said, you gotta surround yourself with people that's gonna tell you word, that's fresh, I like that. You know how I got the name Subliminal? No. I got the name Subliminal because there was a stage I went through in my life where my friends started getting into trouble, right? They started just doing things needlessly. Getting, getting into trouble with the law, to be more specific. And it didn't feel right to me, so I listened to that voice in my, that voice in my head, which is your... Conscience. conscience. And the conscience was like, yo, sir, I don't know about this, homie. So I stayed home. I found myself in my parents' basement, so I grabbed my dad's turntable. You guys know what a turntable is? Right? I feel really old. Turntable thing, big black disc, put it down. Needle. Right, you know what I'm saying? Turntables. And I owned one record, I had one record, I owned it, it was, it was Michael Jackson's Thriller. Right. You feel me? Right? And I would sit there for hours doing the same thing, fam. I'd sit there for hours doing it.
<laughs> and I would sit there and I would keep I would keep scratching and my I'm part Trinidadian too, by the way. Shout out to Trinidad. <laughs> and my mom would be upstairs and say, Oh God, it's not like two cats fighting, stop it, stop it. And she used to go crazy, right? But it didn't matter because I kept doing it. When my homies found out that I was learning how to DJ. I was 14, 14 going on 15 years old. Yeah. Do you think my friends said, that's amazing, son, we support you 110%. No. Or do you think they said, why are you DJing? That's stupid. Number one or number two? No. Yeah. Do you know why they said, why are you DJing? That's stupid. I'll tell you why. Because I was 14, I had no money, I had no car, I had no turntables, I had no mixer, I had no speakers, I had no money, and I had a hole in my shoe. Alright? <laughs> I'm serious. My dad used to buy me these shoes. They were, they were called SCORE. S-K-O-R with two dots above the O. You know what I'm saying? And I had this big hole in the side of my shoe. And cats used to laugh at me. And I said, you know what? It doesn't matter. Because I like doing it. And I slowly got better. I kept scratching. I started scratching records, scratching records. Around the same time, it was important to have the latest haircut. The only problem was I didn't know how to cut hair. So when I didn't have enough money to cut, to cut hair, you know, to go and get the haircut, what did I do? Come out here. By Rob, by show of hands, how many people have ever tried to cut their own hair? Uh, don't lie. Don't, don't front. Bad idea. Don't lie. He did his, he did his today. He's like, I just did mine today. So you know, you know, in order to cut your hair, you got to have like three and a half mirrors, right? Yeah. So one side of my head, one side of my fade always looked amazing. If there was a soundtrack to the way one side of my head sounded or it would look, it would sound like this. So this side was like this. What's up? Right? This side of my head sounded like this. Right? Right? Here we go. This side right here. Right? There were pieces of hair missing. Because you know to get, you know, to get that one side, you got to do this. Everything is reversed. I used to mess up one side of my head, so I'm gonna share with you guys a quick little secret. There's this device that what she's recording. Are you recording me? Don't. Okay, I'm serious. <laughs> There's this device that women use, and it was this amazing thing that I used to play off how I would I would cover up these little ball spots. The thing that women use is it's, it's called eyeliner. It's called eyeliner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's this really thin pencil, fellas, and they like put it on their eye, but they trace it perfectly, and they never stab themselves with it. It's it's absolutely incredible. You gotta see this. So I would take the black eyeliner and I'd put it on my finger and bam, smudge it in. You know what I'm saying? Just smudge it in. So I'm walking to school. So this side of my head, this side of my head, everything was cool. Everything was cool. One day, I'm walking home with my boy Calvin, right? And I feel this wet thing on my arm. I'm like, Calvin, man, you know, could you please not spit on me when you're talking? And he's like, Sean, it wasn't me. I'm like, okay, cool. I feel it again on my arm. I'm like, Calvin, you know, could you please refrain from spitting when you when you talk? He said, Shut it wasn't me. I feel it again. I'm like, Calvin, man, it is not hygienic <laughs> to spit when you talk. He said, Shut it wasn't me. All of a sudden, the sky did this really funny thing, and the sky went, <laughs> and all of a sudden, and it started to pour, fam. And I'm walking home, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it cool. You know, I'm trying to walk like how these guys were walking earlier. You know, so just walking. And my boy looks at me, goes, "Yo, so." He goes, "I'm not the smartest dude, but it looks like your head is bleeding and your blood is black. What's going on, man?" <laughs> man, I had black eyeliner running down the side of my face. How many people think I said, "Yo, I'm not good at barbering. I'm just gonna give it up and find the money." Did I, did I do that, or did I say, "You know what? I'm gonna keep doing this until I get better"? Number one or number two? I got so good at barbering, I opened a barber shop in my basement and it was called, ready for this? It was called The Faded Basement Barber, an underground cut above the rest. Right? <laughs> so people would be coming to my house for a haircut, right? So now I'm charging them five dollars for the haircut, right? Five dollars. While I'm cutting their hair, I got my mixtape playing, right? So now you know you two people like this. I bet you never seen a barber cutting somebody's hair and doing this at the same time. Okay? <laughs> They're cutting the hair. They're like, yo man, yo, yo, son, this tape is banging, son. Who made it? Like, I made it. They're like, yo, how much is the tape? Five dollars. How much for the haircut? Five dollars. Bam, ten dollars. Plus I'm gonna take the tape, go and play it for somebody else, and then I have my name on it. This is subliminal. They say, who made the tape? My barber made the tape. Hmm, I do need a haircut. Things began to grow. Got my first job in a barber shop, and that's how I helped to pay for my way through university. Remember, beatboxing to impress a girl at recess. 
DJing because I was bored, barbering because I could not afford it. Now we're making bank. And the name was getting out there and the name was growing. Something that I enjoyed doing grew into something else. That's the moral of that story. So